Now, first thing you want to do is disassemble the cylinder head and lap the valves using a valve lapping compound to create a tighter seal. You take the two valves and using a sharpie, color the flat part where the valve contacts the seat. This will allow you to track your progress when you lap the valves. After both valves are sharpied, apply valve lapping compound to the valves and the valve seat. Next, place the valves back in their place. Attach the suction cup part of the valve lapping tool to the valve. Place the valve between your palms and twist. The grinding you hear is the valve and the seat mating together. After doing this for about a minute, you should see a ring around the valve where it contacts the seat. Be sure to clean both the valve and the valve seat thoroughly. The valve train on the Super Box Stock engine is as follows. Install the guide plate, then the rocker bolts, and torque them to 9 foot-pounds each. Next, install a 30 thousandths valve shim on each valve. If you're using old springs, inspect them to make sure they are not cracked. Next, install the valve spring along with the retainer and keeper. These springs are a little tricky to get on. You can use a wrench for the 26 pound spring to compress it. Next, install the HP lash caps. The rocker arms, and the rocker arm guide bolts. Thread these on by hand. Now, on the cylinder block, install the gasket and studs. Here I'm using a 10.8 grade bolt studs instead of the stock ones. Install the push rods. Loosen the rocker arms if necessary. Next, mount the, mount the gasket and torque the bolts on the cylinder head to 17 foot-pounds using a crisscross pattern. Carburetor jetting is as follows. The main jet and the E-tube both fit inside the concentric circle. They can both be removed with a flathead screwdriver. The GX140 E-tube has bigger holes and provides more mid-range fuel over the stock E-tube. Put some Loctite on the carburetor studs and thread them in by hand. Next, install the gaskets and then the carburetor. The black plate goes on second after the first intake gasket. Now the black plate, it insulates the carburetor from the heat of the engine and ensures that the gasoline in the carburetor bowl doesn't pour. After the carburetor, goes yet another gasket. Then the air filter adapter. Use two 10 millimeter lock nuts to tighten the air filter adapter to the engine. Install the stock flywheel key unless you're using an arc billet flywheel. Then you need to file 12 thousandths off the width of the stock key to advance the timing 4 degrees. Install the flywheel. Next, the starter cup. And then hand thread the flywheel knot. Nut. Use a torque gun and a 19mm socket. Torque the flywheel 
until it starts turning over the engine. Ready the ignition coil and put some Loctite on the bolts. Use a feeler gauge to set the coil gap to 2 20 thousandths of an inch and then snug the bolts. Install the choke hold bracket. Here I used a dial indicator mounted on a bracket to find the precise point where the piston is at top dead center. Top dead center is where the piston is at the top of the cylinder and the valves are not moving. This is where you set the lash gap. You can also find this point by simply turning the engine over by hand. Now using a feeler gauge set the lash gap on the intake valve to two thousandths of an inch and three thousandths on the exhaust valve. To do this, you first need to torque the black locking nut to 7 foot-pounds on each side. You can use two wrenches to tighten or loosen the rocker arms by moving the bolts simultaneously. Install the exhaust pipe and tighten the bolts. Use a heat gun to make the fuel and pulse lines soft. That way they're easy to install over the hose parts. Before you start the engine, don't forget to add 10W30 motor oil. Hey guys, this is the finished super box stock engine I've been building. And here it is mounted on my dyno. It, uh, I just ran it, it runs well. No uh, oil leaks or anything. So uh, I'm very happy about that. Thanks.